Thanks for joining us for another episode of Motor USA TV. This week is all about the ongoing project bikes. Our team has been chipping away at testing and improving street bikes, dirt bikes, and ATVs. So it's time to see what they've been up to and where these projects stand. Let's start it off with the resident long-term cruiser. It's been a while since we've seen anything about our 2010 Honda Fury. Tell us what's new, Brian. Been waiting on these. Oh, Chris at Low and Mean totally hooked us up. They uh, will definitely add a little bit more custom motorcycle flair to the motorcycle. We also sent over this rear spring. So this way we can kind of tidy up the rear end and reduce that gap between the tire and the rear fender. On the front end, we're going to clean up the bars by installing this Grip A system. It's a digital switch system so that everything from the turn signals to the horn and everything will be run through here neatly on one handle grip. And today I'm going to pull the tank gonna pull the headlight we're getting ready to send that along with the fenders up a little north from here to Eugene to our buddies up at Cutting Edge Illusions and we're gonna get some custom paint done so in the next coming weeks keep an eye out for the next installment of our 2010 Honda Fury project bike. Well it's good to see that Fury is getting a makeover. We also installed a passenger seat so once this baby gets shined up I'll have to take a spin. While Harley's been working on the Fury, our off-road department is tinkering with the new Yamaha YZ450. Here's the number 14. Hey guys, this is the Motorcycle USA long-term Yamaha. The new YZ450 is totally different for 2010, as you know. And one of the things that we're trying to do is get a better idea of what having fuel injection on this Radical engine really gives the rider. What Yamaha has done is create a real simple way to tune your engine. This is the GYTR power tuner. And what it is is a simple handheld device uh, that plugs in to the machine and you're able to tune your EFI system uh, and your ignition so that it does certain things on the track. Basically it just plugs in right here behind the radiator shroud and it's as simple as unhooking this connector, plugging in this connector, and then tinkering with the settings. As you can see, it's really easy to use, and we're not really sure which maps are the best yet for us. We're still playing with them to figure it out, but just to give you an idea what some of the other bikes are like, this is the unit that Honda provides. Honda is also fuel injected, and we've tested this before and had good luck with the performance of the machine, but as you can see, it's a, it's a kind of a convoluted system. This has to hook into the bike. You got another wire that hooks into a laptop computer, which you have to pack with you, and then this hooks on to an accessory battery to make the whole thing work. So it's kind of a lot going on. This is a much cleaner system and definitely more user friendly. Memorial Day always brings a big crowd to the Oregon Dunes, but we beat the mad rush by heading out earlier this week for some sandblasting on our Yamaha Raptor. DTR Racing threw some common sense mods onto our big bore ATV and the results are impressive so far. Let's get back to JC while he's still in the shop. Hey guys, I'm out here with the Yamaha Raptor 700RR. This is the special edition, and as you can tell, it is one wicked looking machine. This is a fuel injected, straight axle, big bore quad, and it's built for the dunes. We were out there tearing it up, and it was our first test on some of the modifications that we had done to it. We packed up a Sparks full system, and this thing is available with a couple different inserts for quiet cores. As we have it now, there's nothing in it, and it's really loud. Underneath, we've done a little bit of work. We've done an air box modification to allow more air in. Uh, there's a cold air intake. And then tucked down in here, we've actually got a DynoJet Power Commander 3. And what this has done is allowed us to map the fuel injection to where we need it to be to make the motor run better with the modifications that we've had installed. The guys at DTR Racing are the ones who actually did the modifications for us. They're based out of Salem, Oregon. It, they rely heavily on clientele who use the Oregon Dunes. So they really know what they're doing out there and as soon as we called them up, they knew exactly which way they wanted to go. They bolted on a set of Fox float shocks, and these are sort of Fox's intermediate level uh, units. They're not the super high end, but they're definitely an improvement over stock. We ran 70 pounds in the dunes this last week, and it worked really well for our test rider. 
we sent Justin Dawes on assignment to document the 2010 Amera Vespa. This quirky rally is all about scooters, and hundreds of faithful riders will be caravanning through the Texas Hill Country and racking up miles on their tiny wheels. Hey, MJ. It's the uh, morning of the day six of our uh, scoot to Texas with the Kimco crew uh, on our way to the Alamo. We started in South Carolina. We've uh, been doing about two to 300 miles every day. Um, we've hit all kinds of weather. We've, we rode through hail yesterday, lightning, um, some really hot days. Um, it's, it's been a great ride. You can follow progress on uh, MotorcycleUSA.com. Look for an upcoming story in Moto USA Mag. Back to you. Hangtown marked the opening round of AMA Pro Motocross, and the racing in Northern California was absolutely awesome. Chad Reed proved why he's the defending champion with the overall win in the 450 class, followed by Mike Alessi on the new KTM 350 and Honda's Davey Millsaps. In the 250 class, nobody would have guessed that Eli Tomac would lay down the wood in his first professional motocross race. The rookie nearly won both motos, but made a small mistake in the opener that dropped him to third. His 3-1 score earned the overall in front of Christoph Purcell and Trey Kennard. Both classes are stacked so deep, it's impossible to predict who's going to win. Don't believe us? Try it yourself in Moto USA's Motocross Fantasy League. The Moto USA Women's Motocross Championship also started at Hangtown, and it looks like this season won't be dominated by defending champion Ashley Filick. Five-time champion Jessica Patterson used her new Yamaha ride to sweep both motos and claim first place in front of Filick and Tara Giger. The series takes a break for Memorial Day, but the FIM World Championship is coming to Glen Helen for the USGP, so there's still a lot of action this weekend. The GNCC racers took on a rain-soaked Pennsylvania track for round seven, where Charlie Mullins collected his third win of the season and moved to within three points of the XC1 leader, Josh String. Mullins is riding a wave of momentum in the final two rounds before the summer break. Jedediah Haynes took the premier MotorcycleUSA.com whole shot award, while Stuart Baylor snagged the check in the XC2. Chris Borick picked up his fifth win this year in the XC1 ATV class and holds a solid lead over Taylor Kaiser in the standings. But Jeff Pickens and Brian Wolf took the Moto USA whole shot bonus money. Jorge Lorenzo took the MotoGP win at Le Mans, besting teammate and rival Valentino Rossi. Remarkably, it's the first time in his young career that Lorenzo has taken back-to-back -back wins in the Premier class. Honda's Andrea DeVizioso took third, with American Nicky Hayden recording his third consecutive fourth place finish. World Superbike makes its yearly stop right here in the States, with racing this weekend at Utah's Miller Motorsports Park. Our own Bart Madsen will be on hand to cover the action on the track, as well as the surrounding festivities. And to get warmed up for the SBK, make sure to check out our exclusive interview with Mad Max himself, Max Biaggi. We caught up with the Italian racer at a recent press event. See what the always outspoken writer had to say. Well, that's it for this week. Now that we know what's going on behind the scenes, we can keep our eyes peeled for complete project updates in the coming weeks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.